I can remember when we first achieved services for every county, which was in 1987, and having watched a mother try to get help and not be able to find help, and then see services available was so important. It was important for women who were trying to get assistance. Uh, it was important to have a hotline. It was important to have a place to go. So uh, that to me, the, the building of the statewide network is definitely the most important achievement that we've made. Over the 40 year history of the coalition, you know, we started with a couple handfuls of, of centers that were doing the work who began to come together with the very audacious goal of having a shelter within 50 miles of any woman experiencing domestic violence. And for all practical purposes, the coalition achieved that goal. Um, PCADV has been responsible for assuring that in the state of Pennsylvania, there is a program, a resource that any um, victim survivor of abuse can go to in their county and they can know that if they cross a county line, there is a program, that there is a 24-hour hotline in every county that one can have access to. The work with domestic violence has grown enormously. Uh, when we started, there was no protection from abuse orders. The police had to actually witness the violence, not so today. The legal, the police, the courts, and the community have been so supportive recently that we've accomplished so much. The laws have changed and uh, yeah, there's much more to do and to go more places to go. But it, it's unimaginable to me when we started out that we would have the support we have today. Three weeks after my mom was killed, I started a petition to make the lethality assessment mandatory statewide. But I came across it in a news article and I started reading about it. Uh, the state of Maryland started it about 10 years ago and their like success rate has been amazing with helping uh, women and families. I, I truly had no understanding of domestic violence. I can tell you that when I walked into that first job, I thought, as many people do still in society today, why doesn't she just leave? Uh, and I learned pretty quickly, why not? And I learned pretty quickly about the level of courage it takes a victim to come forward in a domestic violence case and the additional levels of courage it takes to see that case through when coming forward will probably turn that victim's world upside down and change that victim's life forever. Uh, and that's been learned pretty quick. And I've never forgotten that message that I probably learned in my first week on the job in York County, and I've tried to communicate that to my office. When I became a managing attorney at the Barbara J. Hart Justice Center, which was one of the CLRs that was formed in 2002, we opened offices from scratch in Lackawanna and Susquehanna County. We covered two counties as part of the CLR. And that work was specifically dedicated to providing civil legal representation, all matters, to survivors of domestic violence. And we covered, as I said, two counties participating in not just representation, but on task force and being a part of, of the community in representing the rights of those survivors. So that work, specifically brought PCADV back in because they trained us. PCADV um, trained the CLRs, we were there for a period of time, and they continued to provide that resource. And as I said earlier, they've been a constant resource. They provided technical assistance, they provided legal assistance, case law review, um, legislative updates, le legislative changes, whatever was required, statistics. And so we were able to run those offices that specifically benefited survivors of domestic violence. I think that one of my most memorable moments here at PCADV, and I have to say there have been quite a few, was the day that we were sitting in this room 
with the gun lobby on the other end of the phone call, and we were talking to them about why we are uh, introducing uh, a bill that would significantly change firearms law here in Pennsylvania to make uh, it safer for domestic violence victims, to help um, enforce federal law by making our state law consistent with federal law. And we were getting a lot of pushback from them. And the conversation got quite heated, but we it became so clear to me on that day and in that moment what we were up against. And for all of the work that we've done and all of the progress we've made and all of the good laws and important initiatives that we've implemented, there are still people in this world who believe that domestic violence isn't real and who believe that there are other people and other rights that should take precedence over our victims and, and their safety and the safety of their children. And it was in that moment that it became so clear to me how much more work we had to do and how we can't stop now. The resources for victims of domestic violence, there weren't any. And even in the shelter, we tried to come together to petition our local uh, representative, state representatives to invest in safe, decent, and, and affordable housing. And um, I had drive back then. I didn't know it then, but you know, I was fired up enough to see that there weren't enough services for victims of domestic violence and it was hard enough going through as a victim and then to leave the familiar to come to a place that's unknown and have to rely on services and resources that's not there. You know, that really it adds insult to injury. And a lot of women end up going back because there there's no resources. And, you know, we, I wanted to make a difference. Uh, I joined the movement in 1979 and coming into it, it was already formed in the state of Pennsylvania as a coalition, but it was still pretty new. And I remember being so excited about belonging to something that was larger than myself. And that there were other people who were also talking the same way about victims of domestic violence and about reaching out and trying to educate people. And it was really exciting. And I still feel that excitement today when we come together as a group of advocates and of people who care about this issue. I remember some of the values were we were stronger together than we could stand by ourselves and that does seem to be the message of the election this year, stronger together. I think it still stands for the work that we're doing is that we are stronger when we stand together. We started doing a capital ca campaign in about 2007. It was really pretty awful. Our shelter had become overcrowded. We were turning people away. We were doubling people up in rooms. So we essentially doubled the size of the shelter, but that took up all our play area in the backyard. And um, one of the camp capital campaign people noticed that there was a dilapidated house for sale in the next block, and that began our quest to gain lots and property, um, which eventually became this whole space, which we call the Big Backyard. And this is not just for our clients and former clients, but it's also for all the kids within a two block radius. So we hang a sheet out on the fence and uh, also send flyers around in the neighborhood. And we all, always have great hot dogs and um, other treats, so the kids really flock to it. Um, we have many a, a party on the full moon um, and have various moon-themed um, activities. Women from the shelter can come here and bring their kids and just close the gate and the two-year-olds can run all over the place and play in the sand. We as advocates in the movement, we did so many different types of public education um, awareness events. I remember walking the streets in, in Harrisburg um, doing the, the Take Back the Night March. And I know some colleges and universities still do the Take Back the Night marches. I remember um, being involved in the movement and um, it, it was around the budget. 
And with the budget, um, we gathered shoestrings and, and we and we put them on the, the um, state capitol and say, this is the, the, the type of money that we get to um, make our family safe is, is really um, shoestring budgets. And, and so again, having those um, powerful displays about the importance of everyone in the public being educated about the issue of domestic violence and that it doesn't just occur in um, low-income homes, it just doesn't occur in African-American families or Hispanic families, that it, it, it crosses all lines. We initiated the primary prevention work, really focusing more at a community level and a societal level of changing the norms, not of survivors, but of the communities who are tolerating the violence by abusers. You know, PCADV really amplifies the voice of survivors through their connection with all of the domestic violence organizations statewide. So they're able to take our voice and make it louder. They're able to look across the different issues and figure out how to strategize and advocate to change things. And I think on the public policy front, you know, they're incredibly valuable at the federal and state level to make changes, to bring resources for life-saving services. And another way for Women Against Abuse, they've always had such a depth of knowledge um, and been there to be a consultant to us, you know, so that we're not here out on our own. And when we come across really complicated issues, we have a consultant all the time, you know, and they're just so responsive. They've been helpful in countless situations and we appreciate the um, partnership and the solidarity and we would not want to do this work without them. Our mission has really shifted to raising awareness. Um, I think that I have really set my sights on thinking that, that domestic violence can perhaps be eliminated within another generation, or at least to the degree that we now know it. The strength of the coalition really is our collective purpose. It was the collective purpose when we began, and it remains the collective purpose today. And that really is to achieve equality, a life free of oppression that's inclusive of everyone. PCADV has been a champion for services and justice for domestic violence victims in Pennsylvania for 40 years. All of us at Blackburn Center say, Thank you! For your leadership and vision. Thank you, PCADV, for supporting programs like ours for 40 years. PCADV has been a strong voice for domestic violence victims for over four decades, and Transitions is proud to be part of that voice. Thank you, PCADV, for your support and leadership as we strive to achieve a violence-free future. Many thanks to the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Domestic Violence for helping us provide services to those impacted by domestic violence for the past 40 years. Here's to many more successful years. Thank you for helping us do what we do out in the field every day. Hi, I'm Michelle Miner Wolf from Victims Intervention Program in Wayne County. We would all like to thank PCADB for their commitment to victims and survivors of domestic violence. And thank you for supporting the local programs for the work that we do. Congratulations on your 40 years, and here's to another 40. Mr. PCADB, a woman's place is proud to be celebrating 40 years with you as we work together to create safe and flourishing lives for our community. Happy anniversary, PCADB. A Woman's Place is proud to be working with you as we celebrate 40 years to create safe and flourishing communities. Thank you, PCADV, for 40 years of advocacy, support, and guidance. Thank you, PCADV. 
Thank you, PCADV. Lutheran Settlement House has been honored to work with you this last 40 years, fighting together to end domestic violence and supporting survivors of domestic violence. We look forward to another 40 years of working with you. Thank you so much for your persistence and your resilience throughout this movement and remembering all of the wonderful things that we have accomplished this far. Looking forward to even more. Thank you, PCADV. For leading the way and your tireless efforts in helping victims and survivors, thank you.